Hey, I wanted to make this simple colorblind settings tutorial in Unity because I'm making a game for work that uses a lot of red and green visual aid. And if you didn't know, most colorblind people are red green colorblind. So I wanted to try and help them out. So let's get into it. What I have set up right now from left to right is two UI images, two 2D sprites, and two 3D cubes, which can be translated into any 3D object. I think by showing you these three different objects, it'll cover most assets that would need to be changed. To start with, I'm just going to make a quick colorblind menu. I'm starting by making a new scene, adding a background image, then title text. Next, I'm adding a game object inside of the canvas and renaming it to toggle group. Then in the inspector, adding a component called, you guessed it, toggle group. Next, I added three toggles and arranged them. These toggles are for however many colorblind settings you would like to add. So the top one is no colorblind settings, the next one is Protenopia, and my last one is Duetrinopia, and I don't know if I'm saying those right, I'm trying my best. Also, if you are labeling a toggle and the text is too long, you can easily adjust the right side to quickly get it to fit. Another note is these toggles cannot be children of the toggle group, they need to be separated from it or else this won't work. Once you have all of the toggles set up, if you scroll down on the inspector with the toggle selected, you'll find an area called group. We want to drag the toggle group we made earlier here, and if you don't like dragging it, you can also click the target to find the toggle group. The toggle group makes it so only one toggle can be selected rather than all three of them. I would recommend having the no color blind setting selected first. All you have to do is click the is on checkbox when the toggle is selected. Next, I'm just going to quickly add a button to take me to the beginning level I was showing. After that, we're going to make our first script. I'm going to call it colorblind filters. The first thing we're going to do is delete the top two lines. We won't need them. Then we're going to add using unity engine.ui. Next, I'm going to make public toggles to match the three I made in the colorblind scene. When doing this, you also notice the using unity engine.ui will become a brighter white instead of faded. This just shows that we're using it now. Now in the start function, I'm going to add an if statement that player prefs dot get int and then in parentheses toggle bool equals one. Then inside of the if statement, I'm going to add toggle none dot is on equals true. So to explain the if statement, we want to use the player prefs so the game will save these settings even when the game is closed. Player prefs can only accept integers, floats, and strings. So I chose get int because we can think of a toggle as zero for off and one for on. Next is the toggle bool in quotes. This is just the name so we can call it. Then we set that all equal to one because that would mean the toggle is on. After the if statement, we will add an else statement. Then inside of it, we'll type toggle none dot is on equals false. After that, we want to copy the whole if and else statement two more times and change the names to the proper toggle names. Next, in the update function, we will add more if statements saying if the toggle none dot is on is true, then set the player pref integer to one, else set it to zero, so it's off. Then we're going to copy it two more times and changing it to the proper names again. That is it for this script, so now back in Unity, we will drag this script into the canvas and all of the toggles to the proper area in the inspector. Now if we test it, we should be able to move back and forth between scenes and the check mark will be on the last one we clicked, but the check marks don't actually do anything yet. I'm going to start out with the UI images script. Again, we can delete the first two lines, then add using unity engine.ui. Then we won't need the update function. Next, we'll add in a public sprite for the Protanopia image, but make sure you spell sprite properly to get it work. Then a private image. You can call it whatever you want. Then you'll want to do the same for the Duetrinopia image. In the start function, we will write the same if statement that we did in the last script. Inside of the if statement, we'll type my image component equals this dot get component image. Then my image component dot sprite equals protanopia image. 
This if statement sets the image to what our colorblind replacement image is at the start of the scene loading. So if you have a lot of these, it can add some load time between levels. Next, we will copy it and replace it for Duetronopia. We will only need these two because if the player chooses no colorblind settings, then we won't need to change the UI images. Now we will jump back into Unity. On both of my UI images, I'm going to add this script. Then in the inspector, I'll add the colorblind UI images, or in my case, a different color, for example. Then we can test it, and you'll notice the UI images change depending on what checkbox we have set. Next is the 2D sprites. Making a new script for it, it's going to start out like the other two, where we delete the first two lines and delete the update function. I'll add in a public sprite renderer and call it sprite renderer. This is how we will change the look of the 2D sprite in a second. Then I'll add in two more sprites for Protanopia sprite and Duetronopia sprite. After that, we can go to our last script and copy everything from the start function, paste it, and delete what is inside of both if statements. Inside of the if statement is really easy. We'll just type sprite renderer dot sprite equals Protanopia sprite, then sprite renderer dot sprite equals Duetronopia sprite, and the other if statement, and that's it. Just like the last script, I'll add the script to both 2D sprites, then drag the proper colorblind sprites to the script. We can test it again, and you'll notice it matches the UI images. Finally, is the script for the 3D objects. Just like the other scripts, delete the top two lines, we won't need them. Then we'll add a public renderer and name it render, followed by two public materials for both colorblind filters. I'm going to copy what is inside the start function from another script and delete what is inside of both if statements. This script is also very easy. We'll just type render.material equals protanopia material and render.material equals duetronopia material respectively. Finally, back in Unity, add the scripts to the 3D cubes and add in the proper material to the script. And just to end it, here is the game built. With it all working and me exiting out of it and re-entering it, this game saves whatever checkmark we choose last. That is it for this tutorial. I hope I was able to help someone out with this. Thanks for watching.